Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody is having a great day. Um, it is Monday, about an hour away from doing my live stream and getting set up for it. And, um, you know, we're in silly season here where um, there's not a lot going on. We've heard CeeDee Lamb, um, if he doesn't get a new contract, um, won't show up for camp and now would demand a trade. He wants to be at least the second highest paid in the NFL. And um, we've got the Cowboys doing Cowboys things. And, of course, we got um, – we got Malik Hooker and uh, kind of throwing Micah Parsons under the bus. And Micah Parsons seemed to be a little upset about it. And the Cowboys, of course, doing nothing. So tonight, I want to address maybe the Cowboys, maybe they need to just blow it up. And at this point, it's kind of crazy that I don't know what's going on. In the meantime, I want to trash the Eagles. I want to tell everybody that the Dallas Cowboys have a better defense than the Philadelphia Eagles. All right? I can, can, can we go there with that? Can we go there with that? Okay. Um, and I'm going to tell you why the Cowboys no, – no, 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 no. We'll do a comparison of position by position and see who's better than who. Now, you know I am a Dallas Cowboys homer. So I'm probably not objective enough to rationally, you know, give credence to the Eagles. So I'm going to let somebody else on the outside looking in give us a perspective of a man-to-man -man who has a better defense than the Dallas Cowboys. Okay? Grab yourself some popcorn. Get yourself a beer because it's going to take them a little bit of time to literally go through it. And this is well thought out and definitely a lot of work went into doing this. And while they're talking, I'll be listening and I'll be getting set up for our live stream at eight o'clock. Let's go to the tape, shall we? Let's do your defense here. Now, since you graded so hard, I'm a grade harder now. Demarcus Lawrence, Milton Williams. Who you got, Xander? Why is Demarcus Lawrence matched up with Milton Williams? We're going to go 43 here. Okay. Across the board, edge rushing. Yeah, well, Demarcus Lawrence is a better player than Milton Williams. Now, how hey. old is Demarcus Lawrence? Who cares? Milton Williams doesn't has never played that position in his entire career out there. Yeah, D lost 32 years old. He's probably going to take a big drop off this year. That's kind of an unfair comparison, though, because Milton oh, Williams is not. You're Milton not going to take Milton Williams over. Milton DeMarcus. Williams is not going to play on the outside it, it, much at all. Maybe 10, 15 percent of the snaps. Maybe. They got him listed right now as an end. Well, he's not going to be an end. You got Bryce Huff, Josh Sweat, and then you have Nolan Smith and Brandon Graham. He's not going to play. So, who much. are your 43 ends? I would, your 43 I would, ends are going to be Milton Williams and Josh Sweat, and your interior tackles, if you're in a 43, are going to be Davis and Carter. So you think they're not going to have Bryce Huff on the field if they're in a 43? No, I didn't say that. They're going to put him at strong side linebacker outside, okay. all right, and they're all going right, to put right, Nolan on the saying. other okay. side. All right, I see what you're, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. Chauncey I still don't Gold like that comparison, but all right. Chauncey, Chauncey, mm -hmm. He got killed in it. That's why you don't like it. Mm -hmm. I know no, somebody I don't else like who it doesn't because like it. It's not what the player is. I know the somebody player, else who doesn't like it. The player is depth on the, at the defensive tackle position, and he's a great depth piece at defensive tackle. That's okay. what he is. But I get Chauncey what you're Golston, left defensive tackle versus Jordan Davis. What do you got? Jordan Davis. I don't even know. Who's the other dude? Chauncey Golston. Good player? Yeah. Yeah, sounds like you can replace him with a, with a, with a guy from the recess yard. Mm, damn. So He's just a guy. I, don't don't try and sell me. Coach, you know you know I never know. even heard the name. You know how you know he's lying? Because he goes like this, Jordan Davis. He looks away when he does it. So that's when you know no. he's not telling the truth. Dude, this guy was, this guy was a non-factor in the second half of the season, Jordan Davis. Okay, and, and, what, and what exactly was Chauncey Golston? Well, he showed up at least and played. 
Yeah, Golston actually did. How many sacks did Chauncey Golston have last year? Let's take a look at I his numbers. He had, two. Compared he had to, 1. Uh, 1.5 sacks. Oh, he's a burner. What, what did Jordan Davis have? He is striking fear in the eyes of the opponent. What did opponent. Jordan Davis have? Chauncey, go, Chauncey watch Chauncey out, Eagles fans. fans. Okay. It, it, watch it, out, everybody. Dallas could be making a run this year. They have Chauncey on, Golston. I, mean, I think on, your boy had 19 goals. tackles last year. Okay, so this guy here had how many? Okay, last season he had 25 tackles, one and a half 11 sacks. 11 solo tackles, 14 assisted, one and a half sacks. And What's one your boy have? Home. Let's take a look. Jordan Davis last year and that greatness of – that greatness. Jordan Chauncey Davis Golston. stats. Chauncey Golston out of Iowa. Big Sills is telling me that. Ooh, wait, me. A minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That gets swayed back here. Hold on here for a minute. Hold on here. Jordan Davis gets the advantage here. He gets the advantage. Yeah, even he Big should. Sills is giving him the He was a Davis number one advantage. pick that he they he gave a hell of a lot year. away for him. Wow. Actually, that's better than I thought of a better season. Yeah, that's and my, awesome. his, it's good. It's good. That's what I mean. Jordan Davis is developing nicely. Everyone's looking for the splash plays, and that's he's not, not as much of a splash player. He's playing more nose. He's not going to make splash plays, but what's his impact on the game? How much is he freeing up You know, people from blocking Jalen Carter? How much is he making life easier for the guys on the edge? He's got a different role. Jordan Davis is progressing nicely. I think he's going to have a big year this year. Excuse me, Prince. He had two sacks, Dick. Do your homework. All Ooh, right. Did he say Dick? Um, Micah Parsons versus Josh Sweat. Micah. Micah Parsons. I mean, Micah Parsons definitely has him beat there. I'm not uh, – I've been a little bit underwhelmed and very underwhelmed, actually, by Josh Sweat. I just – the guy's a prototypical edge rusher. He should be playing lights out football, and he just never turned the corner. He's streaky. He's inconsistent. Uh, he has all the tools in the toolbox to be a great player. Hasn't quite put it all together. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminds me of Derek Barnett. Derek, oh like, not that man, bad. not like, Derek he's Barnett. Been a little better, but Derek Barnett was never like awful. I know we had crazy expectations because he was a 14 overall pick, but. That's kind of what he reminds me of. Just a guy who hasn't quite turned the corner, hasn't quite lived up to the potential, and hasn't been what we've been want wanting him to be in Philadelphia. So definitely Michael Parsons on that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Maniac, we don't, we, don't, we don't do punters and kickers here, guy. That's not <laughs> part of pro football, okay? They're not football players, my friend. All right. Will Linebacker, Damon Clark versus Bryce Huff. Who is it? Damon Clark? Yes. I'm going to go Bryce Huff, I think. Let me, me look too. up Damon Clark's stats here. Yeah, look. Um, I mean, zero sacks last year. He had 109 total tackles, 70 solo. That's pretty good. Play. I mean, that's pretty good. It's not great, but it's not bad. And your guy um, had 19 tackles. Yeah. Th are they playing different positions somewhat, though? Oh. Well, that's because we're putting him in a 43. Yeah, no, I get it. Because I mean, of the so, defense that we're doing for the exercise, they're mm -hmm. they're different. So right. it's not to compare the two. One guy's a pass rusher. The other guy's not a run stopper. The other guy's more of a run stopper than the guy who's like, mm -hmm. that's not kind of, he's more like a Kaiser White kind of guy. Yeah, that's fair. So I don't, it's not really a great comparison. I'll still take Bryce Huff because I value getting to the quarterback. And his pressure rate was amazing. His pass rush win rate was amazing. I know it hasn't been full yet. He hasn't had the chance to be a full-time guy yet. He hasn't started, so I understand those reservations. But based on what I've seen, based on what I think he can be, I'll take Bryce Huff. I'm optimistic on him. I'm definitely still concerned, you know, that we're not going to replace the production of Hassan Reddick with him. But I think he's going to be a good player, so we'll see what he's able to do mm -hmm. in a full-time role. I t I'm taking Eric Kendricks, middle linebacker, over Devin White. Yeah, me too. I'll take I'll take him for sure. Um just haven't seen it from Devin White in four years. It's tough to go off the first year of his career coming out of LSU, and he was really a game wrecker, uh, obviously a fifth overall pick. Linebackers don't get picked that high. So he was obviously that good of a player early in his career. But we've had four straight years now, very, very underwhelming play. So we have to see it with him. I'm not fully sold Devin White will be the guy. I'm, I'm optimistic, but we haven't seen it in a while. So let's let's see it first. 
Strong said linebacker. Nolan's. I'll take anyone over Nolan Smith, but I want to know what the numbers of Maris Lofu are Damn. for the Cowboys. M A R I S T L I O F A U. Before I make that proclamation here, because Nolan Smith, in my opinion, has got a lot of work to do before we start talking about what kind of football player this guy's going to be. Um, um, I, I just Nolan Smith, in my opinion. Again, has a lot of work to do. Yeah, I mean, Maris Liafau is a is a rookie. He's coming in. He was drafted in the third round this year. So we'll see what he's able to oh, do. Oh, well, wait. That's a push. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. I don't even know if it's a push. I mean, you can't give it to Nolan Smith, but to be fair. But I can't give it to the other kid. You definitely can't give it to the other kid. Nolan Smith at least played snaps in the NFL. I mean, well, I'm giving true. him I'll give him the edge. Okay. True. Not good ones. Um. Deron Bland or Quinion Mitchell? So you have Quinion as our starting corner? Um, okay, or Isaiah Rogers, who hadn't played last year. Yeah. Plus this guy's first team all Deron, pro. You got to get Deron Bland there. Even, even if you go Deron versus Keeley, you got to take Deron. He's proven it in the NFL, played at a high level. Even Deron over Isaiah, haven't seen it in a year. Isaiah's a young player, pretty unproven, honestly. Only got, you know, only had a, a year or two of playing good football. And over Quinion, Quinion hasn't played a snap, so you got to take Deron Bland in that one. Mm -hmm. um, Donovan Wilson over, I mean Donovan Wilson or Gardner Johnson. This is interesting. Gardner guys. Johnson didn't play at all last year, and Donovan Wilson, I believe, was uh, a Pro Bowl consideration guy. If I'm not either, it was him or Malik Cooker, because uh, one of those guys I thought was a Pro Bowler last year. Because they got they got a bunch of pro bowlers in that secondary. Donovan Wilson, strong safety, Dallas Cowboys, or Gardner Johnson? Going off potential, I think I'll take Gardner Johnson. But I guess if you're going off of last year, Donovan Wilson had a better year. I mean, he played, um, I don't know, let me look up what his stats were last year and how many games. He only played, well, he played 15 games last year. 88 total tackles, down from 101. 55 solo, down from 77 the year before. So he kind of went backwards a little bit last year. He had five sacks and 22-0 last year. Maybe they used him differently in a new in a new defense down there. But, you know, going off potential, I'll take CJ. I think CJ is a bigger upside player. 88 tackles is a lot for a safety. Yeah, it is. That's true. Here it comes. I'm taking Malik Cooker, free safety over Reed Blankenship. Wait, who are you taking, Donovan Wilson or CJ? Um... It's closer than I thought what you said. Because um, he's so much out of position a lot of the time, Gardner Johnson. But he's a playmaker. Yeah, that's, like, his, right. that's his style of play. You're right. But he's he's a guy who makes up for it making big plays. Some, You know what I mean? I'm Yeah, I mean, he kind of has the Duran Bland, Trevon Diggs. Stuff, yeah. You know? they get, the they, thing hey, they make big plays, but they also get burnt. The year Trevon Diggs led the league in interceptions, he also led the league in getting absolutely cooked on the deep ball because he was jumping too many routes. So, you know, there's give and take with all that stuff. So I, I think it. Donovan Wilson's a better all-around player, but I think Gardner Johnson's a better big game player. Like, oh, that's fair. playmaker. Yeah, Turn better up. playmaker. Yeah, look at Philly 500. 88 tackles for a safety means the guys up front are not doing their job. Mozzie! Where are you, Mozzie? There we go. CJ. All right. I'm taking Malik Cooker over Reed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. Malik Cooker. He's a, a pro player. bowler, right? Yeah, Malik, Malik Cooker's Cooker a pro a bowler. Player. He's a legit player. Reed, I mean, you know. Yeah. Ed Reed Blankenship. Check it out. Ed Reed Blankenship. That's what folks are calling him nowadays, I guess. Still. Now I'll take Malik <laughs> there. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a cowboy <laughs> win. And then Trayvon Diggs versus Slay. I got Diggs. Yeah, I got Diggs. I got Diggs there as well. Yeah, I'm a Trey. I like I like Trevon Diggs. I think he provides you a big spark that you need every once in a while on defense. I know he gets burned on the big play every once in a while, but I can live with that when you make the kind of plays he does. Now, if you're going off last year because you used this against CJ, and you used this against a couple of other guys, how many games did Trevon Diggs play last year? Goose egg. No, he yeah right. He got hurt in the training camp, didn't he? Something Gone. Like that. So he hasn't played. He ran Stephon Gilman. 
they had Stefan Gilmore out there who did a really nice job. He played yeah, he did a really until good. He's a great player, Cardinals obviously game. older yep. on the back end of his career, but still an amazing player. Uh, but Diggs didn't play last year, so let's see. I mean, how is he going to come back from the injury? Is he going to come back and be the same player? We don't know that. So you think I mean, a 34-year-old corner is going to outplay a guy? Um, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it's not it's not the slam dunk that it would have been if we did this exercise a year ago before he got hurt. So it looks to me the Cowboys have the advantage on defense here. And Oh, wait. I got one more to Breaking go. Breaking news. The Eagles don't have an advantage on defense. Like, see? Yeah, I knew that. There you go. Hold on. Hold on. There Mr. you Japan, go. He's going to buy Mr. Uh, Kelly Green. There you go. Even coach, the Eagle fans recognize the Mike Cowboys McCarthy, have a better defense. OC head coach versus Now, this is the bonus Mickey. section. You got to go, Mike. I mean, he's got a Super Bowl ring. I know it's a long time ago, and I know he's got a lot of a lot of things where you just shake your head as a head coach in his career. But I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. I want to hear who you're picking and why. Because you can make a case for Nick. He's got only three years, so he doesn't quite have the, the, the tenure. But he's got an NFC title. He's got an appearance in the Super Bowl. He won the NFC East. And he's got... A 66, a 66 winning percentage. That's pretty okay. good. That's really good. Okay. I know we have our gripes with them. I get it. I'm with you on them. Mike McCarthy's won a Super Bowl as yep. a head football coach play calling go. guy. Yeah, and how many years did he play with Aaron Rodgers? The guy under, was a very underwhelming. <coughs> oh, so if and he so wins Aaron it, Rogers. now we're going to quantify it. Is that what we're saying here? If he wins the Super Bowl. So that's like me saying, well, this guy went to the playoffs three years in a row, went to a Super Bowl. But he sucks, too. So he, which metric are we using here? The Nick Sirianni metric? Well, Nick, what Nick's done. This guy, what he did, doesn't matter. Okay? I, didn't say, I, mean, I didn't say I gave him the win because of it. I'm just saying you, you, you can't give him the credit without adding the context. Can I tell he, you why? I he can't. was largely underwhelming as the Green Bay Packers head coach, okay. and he's made some questionable moves, moves in Dallas. I, yeah, but they've and been that winning. That guy over there on first. that side of the ball over there. Doesn't make. I mean, if it's not for Big Dom, they got to come down with a guy in a straitjacket to put the guy in a straight. They got to put him in an asylum or something because Big Dom is the guy controlling the guy in the sidelines. Well, let me let me let me ask. Let me throw something here about yeah, Mike. But, but you, you Go can't ahead. Hold on. Mike has Sirianni coached won Green Bay. Last Mike year. has coached the Green Bay Packers and the Dallas Cowboys, the two most difficult franchises to coach. You know why? Green Bay doesn't have an well. owner. And Green Bay doesn't okay. have them. Yep. They've got a board of they got directors that they have to answer mm -hmm. to. And in Dallas, you got to waffle around Jerry. And they've won 36 games since he's been the head football coach there. I get it. The knockouts are terrible looking for Dallas in his first three years. How many years really, has he been quite frankly, Four. Nick's had one year in, in Philly that was really good when it came to being the head coach. Remember something? He was fighting for his job, though. Yeah, I mean, last year, I mean. There you go. That's the end of what I, I recorded earlier before I went and picked up that stove. But there you have it. Not my words. Not my words. That's Eagle people that are telling you that the Eagles.